Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Whether or Not. I'm your host, Gavin Sandell, and I'm very excited to be making my debut this season. And I'm joined here with forecaster Matt Howard. Matt, we've really had a disappointing week when it's come to the clouds. What is your outlook looking like for the weekend? Well, the weekend definitely going to look like a lot more sunshine. So if you are a sunshine lover, this is definitely going to be the weekend for you. And a lot of sunshine lovers, they like the high temperatures as well. Will they be seeing that as well? Definitely higher, definitely higher temperatures than we have seen since this week. It's definitely going to be a very nice weekend. That's good. Yeah, I've, I've heard about 40s and maybe some 50s as well in the forecast for this weekend. So we'll hear more of that when Matt does his extended forecast. Uh, but we have some nature in the news stories coming your way. So let's jump right into it. The Amazon rainforest is experiencing one of its most extreme droughts in history. So why should we care about this issue? There are billions of tons of carbon stored in this rainforest and brings upon different medicines that can cure diseases such as malaria and leukemia. The latest El Nino has brought upon these dry conditions. El Nino is when temperatures are above average in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean affecting jet streams and regional weather patterns. This drought has occurred upon all nine Amazon rainforest countries, making it a horrible disaster for all. Because of this drought, there are shortages in drinking water and crops. Not only does this drought damage plants and trees, but it is hurting aquatic animals, such as river dolphins, due to the high lake temperatures as high as 40 degrees Celsius. These wildfires burned over 16 million acres of land just between the last few months of 2023 alone. The Amazon rainforest experiences its dry season in the summer and the rainy season in the winter. With showers and thunderstorms returning to the area, it should cause a drought to alleviate over portions of the rainforest. But it will take time and many rounds of impactful rainfall. February 2nd marks a holiday that has become a cultural phenomenon. That holiday, headlined by Punxsutawney Phil, is Groundhog Day. Almost every year since 1886 has featured a prediction from Phil on when springtime will arrive. Phil is based in the town of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, which lies about an hour and a half west of State College. The holiday comes from a Pennsylvania Dutch church superstition that if a groundhog emerges from its burrow and sees its shadow, Winter will continue for six more weeks. If no shadow is to be seen, spring will arrive early. Overall, the dominant choice for Phil has been a six-week extension of winter, as that choice accounts for 107 of the 127 recorded predictions, and his thoughts from 2021 to 2023. Though his inner circle claims Phil has a 100% accuracy rate, actual climatological evidence suggests Phil correctly predicts a bit under half the time. Data disagreed with Phil's forecast for the past three years, in which each year Phil predicted a longer winter, though temperatures were actually above average. The last time he was right, according to NOAA, was back in 2020. Friday's forecast for Gobbler's Knob features partly to mostly cloudy skies, so we'll see if Phil will predict more winter or an early spring. We talk about a record-breaking year when it comes to high global temperatures in 2023. But these record high temperatures have not really changed ringing in the new year. Last week, Washington, D.C. hit a record high of 80 degrees, smashing the average high by a whopping 35 degrees and just receiving several inches of snow just the week before. 80 degrees for Washington, D.C. was the highest temperature ever recorded for the month of January. These unseasonably warm temperatures stretched up to State College where the high was 63 degrees, which was just a few degrees shy of the daily and monthly record. This occurred because of a strong warm front and a strong ridge from the south, bringing this warmer air more up north. For the near future, temperatures in the United States will be near average once again. The National Hurricane Center is making changes to one of its most iconic forecast graphics. The hurricane cone, which displays areas forecasted to be in the track of an impending cyclone, will be de-emphasized over land. 
This will allow warnings and advisories already issued by the NHC to be more prominent. This follows their long-standing message that hurricanes can affect those outside the so-called cone of uncertainty. What will result from this change will be a map that looks somewhat like current products, though with a few significant differences. Inland tropical storm and hurricane warnings, which were emitted from previous graphics, will now be featured above the cone. Coastal warnings will also be present and layered above the cone. In addition to a facelift to their graphics, the NHC will make an annual adjustment to the cone's dimensions before the season. The adjustments are made based on forecasting skill from the previous year, where areas of good accuracy decrease the size of the cone and vice versa. The NHC plans to roll out the refreshed graphics prior to the Atlantic hurricane season, which begins on June 1st. Cloudy skies have been quite the story for this week, but will the sunshine return just in time for the weekend? The answer is yes, but we do have to get through Friday first before we get to experience some sunshine. We do have mostly cloudy skies prevalent through the area with a few flurries in upstate New York and the mountains of West Virginia, as well as some rain showers out towards the coast. And this is because of a low pressure system that is making its way from the north that pushed south and brought a cold front. But as you will see, our cold front is kind of weak and our temperatures won't be as low. And for Saturday, it's definitely gonna be quite the story. It's quite a different story because we finally have sunshine back in the picture. And this is because of a high pressure system bringing these pleasant conditions upon our way. And mainly sunny skies for about the entire state. For Sunday, we have lots of sun once again, even more sun than we did on Saturday, and temperatures will be even quite a bit higher as high pressure will still be very dominant over the area. For Friday, we do have some overcast skies that hang just a little bit just before the weekend with temperatures near 40 degrees, and this is still quite a few degrees above average for this time of year. For Friday night, our temperatures will be in the upper 20s with mostly cloudy skies. And even though it's one of our cooler nights, it's still quite above average for this time of year, where our low should be around 20 degrees. For Saturday, there's going to be abundant sunshine, so go out and enjoy the nice weather, go on a nice walk. Temperatures are going to be in the low to mid 40s with abundant sunshine. For Saturday night, mainly clear skies with the cool, coolest night of the weekend with a low near 26 degrees. And for Sunday, definitely the pick of the weekend with the temperatures being the most highest with 10 to 15 degrees above average, highs in the upper 40s. And coming up next is our feature by Austin Long on global warming. I'm standing out here in some pretty chilly conditions where just about a week ago we saw temperatures hit in the 50s and 60s in State College. As we head into February, I think it's safe to say that January was a wild roller coaster of emotions when it came to the weather. With the majority of those days having above average temperatures, I also think it's safe to say that the weather in the world is changing drastically. 2023 clocked in as the warmest year on record globally. Earth's average land and ocean surface temperature in 2023 was 2.12 degrees above the 20th century average. This is the highest it's been since NOAA started recording back in 1850. It also beat its predecessor year, 2016, by 0.27 degrees. The 10 warmest years since 1850 occurred within the past decade. A majority of the areas around the world saw much warmer than average temperatures with a good cluster of areas seeing record warmest throughout the year. With these temperatures, polar sea ice hit an all-time low. The Antarctic sea ice coverage averaged 3.79 million square miles in 2023. 
The Arctic didn't do much better, averaging 4.05 million square miles in 2023, ranking among the 10 lowest years on record. Looking ahead to 2024, there's a 1 in 3 chance that 2024 will be warmer than 2023, and a 99% chance 2024 reaches the top 5 warmest years on record. Global sea level has risen about 8 inches since record keeping began in 1880. By 2100, even on a path that contains lowest possible greenhouse gas emissions, the U.S. sea level alone is projected to rise at least one foot. With a high emission scenario, we're looking at it being increased by over six feet. These numbers may seem small in the grand scheme of things, but they actually have major implications. These increases could cause increased flooding due to the storm surge and high tides being intensified. This, to me, seems like one of the obvious consequences of global warming, but there's a few I think we all forget about. Some others include strengthening hurricanes, longer and intensified droughts and heat waves, longer wildfire seasons, and dynamic changes in precipitation patterns. Looking past the impact on humans, there are incredibly diverse ecosystems, both on the land and in the sea, that are losing habitats and vital resources due to temperatures rising globally. It may seem like there is little light at the end of the tunnel, but fear not, there are preventable measures that aid in slowing the process. The overall goal is to simply reduce our carbon footprint on the earth. That means minimize our use of greenhouse gases and damaging energy sources. Some helpful tips include unplugging unused electricity using items at home, using more renewable energy like solar or wind, utilizing travel to the best of our ability, and encouraging others to do the same. These measures may seem small and insignificant, but with collective action, together we can help slow down the damage being done to our planet we all call home. For whether or not, I'm Austin Long. If you're a big fan of the sunshine we have occurring for this weekend, look out because much of the next week will be much of the same with lots of sunshine in store. But first we have our weekend recap. For Friday we do have some overcast skies with temperatures near 40 and for our weekend we have temperatures in the mid to upper 40s with lows in the mid to upper 20s with lots of sunshine. So definitely take advantage of that nice weather. And for our extended forecast, definitely much of the same for this pattern. We do have temperatures getting from like 5 to 15 degrees above average. So lots of sunshine sort for the week. Tuesday looking to be near 40 with our coolest day. And Thursday with upper 40s to near 50 with lots of sunshine. And speaking of very little precipitation today, we have our weather whiz quiz question for the week. Yes, thank you so much, Matt. Uh February, uh, usually uh, you don't see too much precipitation here, but I want to talk about the anomalous years, and I want to talk about the uh, lowest recorded amount of liquid equivalent precipitation that fell in the month of February in State College. Is it A, 0 inches, B, 0.22 inches, C, 0.36 inches, or D, 0.44 inches? If you guessed B, 0.22 inches, you would be correct. Wow, I can't even imagine 0.22 inches of precipitation in one month. I would, especially in our most active times of the year when it comes to winter, that's just very impressive. Absolutely, you're completely right. And that came in 1895. Wow. Thank you everyone for joining us for another edition of Weather or Not, and we will see you all next week.